Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we have a quick video to do and it's all about budget. It's not really that fun, except if you're talking about going to Hawaii. Should we go to Hawaii? What would we tell our kids if we already booked it? We already booked it. Do you want to go? Yes. We already booked it. We booked it weeks ago. Do you want to go? <laughs> yes. We're so not going tomorrow, is, but we're going to go. Which island are we going to? We're going to Kauai. So we'll be back in just a minute. We just actually surprised our kids and told them that we actually booked this trip to Hawaii. But we'll be back in just a minute and we'll talk to you about how we made that budget work and all the tips and tricks that we have in order to make big trips like this possible on very little income and money. So... Stay tuned and we'll be right back. All right, you guys, so we're back. We are obviously, it's a different day. <laughs> As d happens with our kids, they, we have learned, and I'm probably not do surprises on camera anymore. They, <laughs> our older ones do not like being filmed when they get a surprise. They just, very... they don't like it. And so it didn't, they are very excited to go on this trip. But that day, Anyway, end of the weird, and then we have run into two more snowstorms here in Seattle. So we've now finally had time to sit down and finish this video. So tips and tricks on how to afford going to Hawaii. We don't know how to afford it like other places, but we have kind of mastered on how to save money going to Hawaii, and that's what we're gonna talk to you guys about. We could use our points for other things. We but could, anyways. but I, I'm addicted to going to Hawaii. So because I'm addicted to going, I have to, work every trick in the book, I feel like, to make it happen. And this year we made it happen again. So we'll talk about the first and number one thing that we do in order to be able to afford it, and that's our using our American Express points to the max. And I'm gonna let him talk about that because it's his American Express card that we use from his business, from our business, but from what he does to maximize the points that he earns, so. So the first thing, obviously, if you're gonna be using travel points, is looking at your cards. There's several cards out there. We happen to have the uh, American Express Platinum card, which is always ranked as one of the top three cards. Now, if you are traveling a lot, then it's a really good one. If you're not traveling a whole lot, maybe you can look at like American Express Gold. We went to Hawaii the first time on that. There's other travel cards. Basically, what you wanna do is if you're thinking about using points, look and research the card, whether it's a travel point card to where you maximize your points with travel, or whether it's a card that maximizes points for other types of things, whether that's purchases, cash back, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So really research your card ahead of time and ask yourself what you wanna do. Uh, financial advice for anything, never carry a balance. Points are not worth it if you're paying interest all the time. Yeah. They, you just, it's not worth it. So the, the way to do this is always pay off your balance, but you earn up your points. Now we have a good advantage because I can use my business. We don't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to <laughs> make it, but the business does. So that allows us to earn points faster than would normal. Normal person. Uh, just so that's a little caveat we throw out there. If you travel for work, save those points that you earn from your, your travel points, your airline points, save those points if that's the way you are able to earn points and that kind of thing. And you, you know they accrue over time. So if it takes you several years to add them up, it's fine. But basically the American Express Platinum Card is how we get the points in the first place. Yeah. So from there, we're able to turn those into tickets and pay for the resort is how we do it. Now there's other things we have to do it to cover the costs that aren't used in points. Um, we'll so we're gonna talk about that next. Yeah. So we used to do, it used to take us, well, it, it still could take us two years to earn enough points to cover a very large portion of our trips. Um, but I have a hard time waiting two years. So that's why I've kind of come up with other tactics to get there sooner. But it used to it take us two years to kind of build up a whole bunch of points um, in order you to cover the cost. You can go to a little nicer if you have more points, obviously. Yeah. So, so the Dana's lack of patience <laughs> changes things. This snowstorm is my lack of patience. This is exactly why us here in Washington in the Northwest need to get to sunshine because it's it gets kind of hard. So the next tip that we learned this past year in order to not necessarily save money, but to teach our kids the value of money. Last year when we went to Hawaii, 
we were having, I was having a hard time leaving. The kids didn't want to leave. We were talking about the next time we were going to be able to go. And he was saying we have to wait another two years to be able to go. And we were sad about that. And I joked with my children then, this is a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. I joked with them that if they wanted to go again in one year, they could pay for their own plane ticket. And I said it jokingly, but all of them gave me a look like, that's all it's gonna take? How much is a plane ticket? So at that point, when I realized they were actually serious on saving money, I kind of gave them the challenge last year of spending the entire year to think about how they could save that money. And it could not come from our income. That was yeah. the key. It couldn't be like, I'm gonna do extra chores or I'm gonna vacuum the floor extra today or it could not come out of our regular paycheck. That was the number one rule. So the older girls now can babysit. So they would hand over half of the money they made from babysitting each time they went so that they still had some money, but they were also putting money aside for their plane ticket and they built that up over time. Other things that the younger kids did, they would go and work for grandpa. They would go help work in his house. They would do some cleaning chores. He likes to take kids to the grocery store and have them help at the store. Little fun things like that they were able to do. That doesn't buy you a plane ticket, but we also it have, it does help. And every little $20 into the bucket helps. We also have an advantage where we do online surveys, consumer surveys that we can do and you can earn um, points or you can earn cash back from those surveys. So I do, it's called uh, opiniansurvey.com. Yeah. There's several of them out there. Some are fraud, so look into them. But I, well, I sit and watch TV, mm -hmm. especially when Dana's watching like oh, stop. Bachelorette no, no. or something. Mm -hmm and I'm bored Stop. but I wanna be around her, <laughs> I am on the laptop taking yeah. surveys because I figure if I'm gonna waste an hour, I might as well earn a few pennies here and there. Yeah. And it adds up because the one year we bought those little uh, snorkel masks. Yeah. So doing that, there's yeah. all sorts of things, but basically doing what you can to get yeah. those extra dollars to help play, pay for the tickets and get your kids involved. It gets them, it teaches yeah. them good lessons. I mean, our five-year-old was willing to go and do, we have a company here in um, Seattle that tests for ultrasound equipment and you can go and be a volunteer and get paid to do that so that they can make sure that the equipment is working correctly before they send it off to the hospitals and they pay for that and so my older kids were grumbling the day that they wanted me to have all the kids come and so that they didn't want to go that day so I took my two younger kids and they came home and they said I just earned $75 or I just earned $100 just for a half hour of work like it actually isn't work they just laid on a bed and had their arm ultrasound like their arm scanned or their belly scanned and they earned, you know, a very large chunk of their plane ticket. And so once the older kids kind of realized that they said, Oh, size me, sign me up. So, but we also did it too. I think we've done it three or four I've done times. It yeah. So total we've done it. So the, the main, uh, summary is look for those side hustles, every little <laughs> yeah. bit, every little thing, surveys, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. that you can just earn a little extra money in different places. So we got to a point this year where I realized we were gonna have enough money to pay for the plane tickets. And I told the kids that, I said, you're doing really well, you owe me 100 and you owe me 75 left or that kind of thing. And th they knew that that was gonna be possible. So we kind of said, okay, we've done the airfare side of it. Then we were gonna start working on the resort side of it, like the, the hotel side of it. So my tips on saving money for like your hotel or your, your resort. So it does depend on how big your family size is. We've got six of us. So a family our size can no longer do the hotel size of room. We can't do two queen beds. We can't do, you know, small little coffee maker in the corner kind of thing. We can't do that any longer. And so we have to find places that do two bedrooms or suites or uh, with a full kitchen, and we'll talk about why we'd like to have a kitchen. Um, well, hotels have capacity limits, so you can't have as yeah. our group size. They'll make you get two hotel rooms, which doesn't work. So in my research over the years, I've even looked at getting like the dual rooms where there's two rooms, you know, with the door in between that you can get them at the same time. But the cost is actually even more than getting an actual suite. We actually went to a resort a couple of years ago, and wondered why our suite had their own elevator and why it said ph on it and we realized that it was penthouse <laughs> and that was probably one of the best rooms that we've ever got those are things to look for so we now look for those types of resorts and rooms and suites on verbo or airbnb um, and those kinds of sites aside from like 
looking for a Marriott hotel or a Hilton because you can find people who are selling their condo timeshare or they're just trying to rent out their unit for a cheaper price than you can going through a regular hotel website or even like Travelocity. The other thing to think about is if you get a regular hotel room, that means you're eating out every single meal. Right. And with kids and family, yeah. the crap adds up. Yeah. So we once, we went out to eat, what was that with the restaurant? Mac and cheese. Oh, we paid $21 for Kraft Mac and Cheese. Literally straight out of the box. We're not talking like restaurant grade. We're talking like the 99 cent Mac and Cheese Kraft. Yeah. Huge waste. So yeah. having a kitchen can help you. And Yeah, well, one more little tip. on When you're looking at some of the websites like Verbo or Airbnb or HomeAway, do your research and compare different room, different houses or different condos or different units that you find. When I, we went last year, I found one and I suddenly thought, oh, this is only 200 and something dollars a night. This is going to be way cheap. We can totally do this. I was getting excited and I totaled it up for the number of days that we were going and they added the taxes and the fees and the cleaning service and the non-refundable deposit. And it was suddenly almost double what I thought the cost was going to be. And I thought, oh, this isn't going to be possible. If I can't find a unit on a golf course you know, a mile away from the ocean, I'm not going to be able to find something oceanfront. But then when I did the same search at an oceanfront resort, right next to the Disney Aulani Resort, I found an oceanfront room with two bedrooms, a kitchen, a living room, a pull-out couch for not not so, quite so half. So basically you need to watch out for the hidden fees. Airbnb yeah. sites hide all the fees, non-refundable yeah. deposits. So make sure you pay attention to the fees yeah. because there's a lot of hidden crap. A hundred dollar room turns into 200 really fast when they don't tell you all the fees. Right. So that's the other and thing we've to learned, watch out for. Yeah, we've learned that some of these resorts, some of them can't overcharge their fees. They kind of set a limit. Whereas someone who's trying to get rid of their, their townhouse on a golf course, they can jack up their fees as much as they want because it's their own unit. So watch for those kinds of things. So when it comes to food, the way we save money for food and the reason why we get places with a kitchen right so there's two three different ways that you can save and not spend as much on food when you go so the first thing that you do is you shop at costco every island has a costco <laughs> it will be your best friend for multiple reasons on all the islands? Yep. either way the ones we've been to the big ones most maui island. big island Kauai, and oahu all yeah. have a costco the first tip is save your costco rebate it's very tempting right now to get your rebate coming in the mail or your email, it's very tempting to go and spend it right away and go to Costco with it. Save those rebates. They're good for the entire year. They don't expire for a whole nother year. So save those rebates. And then the second tip is, well, because we get two rebates. We have one for our Costco regular membership card, but then we also have one for our Costco credit card. So we're going to have double rewards so if coming you use, back. So if you use the Costco City card, I think it is, uh -huh. is part of the membership. Yeah. I don't think you have to do that, but I would recommend it if you're using Costco on a regular basis because you will get your membership rewards plus you get your credit card rebate, which is 2% for gas. I mean, they've got all these different things, yeah. but basically it's another chunk of change that comes to you at the end of the year. So I probably am going to have five to $700 just in rebate money that we're going to be able to use on this trip. So there are a few tips that, to using your Costco rebate. When you go to Costco to cash out these rebates, one of them I have is in my email and the other one is coming in the mail soon. So we are gonna have, we are gonna have two actual rebates. What we do when we go is we make two cartloads and we send him through with one rebate and, and use that money on that cartload. And then I'll go through another lane and I will cash out the other rebate. The reason why we do that is because once you have cashed that rebate, you get cash. So if I only spend $100 of a $700 rebate, I've got $600 that I can use for cash for anything. For all the puka just, dogs you want. All the puka dogs on Kauai, you guys. I'm so excited for a puka dog. It's like our own mini savings account for the year, right? So we also, so we buy our food. We, we buy, you know, the Angus burgers are great to put in the freezer and pop in the microwave when you're hungry coming Cereals, up from the beach. fruits. I mean, the typical stuff. Right. But that you can make at home. Yeah. So you only eat out like special times, whether right. it's... You're going to a luau. Slushies for the kids, yeah. uh, a special night out, a real nice dinner or something right. like that. You save up for that rather than having it all burned up. So then the other thing that we do with our Costco rebate is we buy souvenirs. 
You guys, the Costco souvenirs. Someone buys souvenirs. Costco is so awesome. I mean, imagine your Costco now and thinking, oh, I wish I could buy that, but like I shouldn't. Yeah, you buy those things when you're in Hawaii. I like to buy the cute little beach bag because it has a Hawaii logo on it. And Hawaiian oh, I get the dresses. little the little wraps, the little yeah, swim the wraps. wraps. They're like 10 Sarongs bucks. Or whatever Sarong. Yeah, Sarong. that's the right word. They're $10, but if you buy those at any other okay. boutique or whatever, they're gonna be $20, $25. You can buy your snorkel gear once you get there. There are different things that you can buy to use as a souvenir, aside from you know going to another souvenir shop. Talking about the snorkel gear and stuff, so lots of times those things will be at the resort, flippers and things like that. If yeah. you wanna bring your own, great, but otherwise they'll We've been every time we've found a few, or we go to secondhand the stores. secondhand Goodwill stuff and pick up some goggles and while like we're that. there. While we're there, because a lot of people buy them at Costco and yeah. they don't want to lug them home, yeah. so they just give them to the donation. They site. live in Minnesota and never gonna see warm water again, yeah. and so they're like, we don't need these. That's our way of kind of saving and having extra cash. So like, I don't have to in my mind, I don't have to kind of save up extra money in order to have spending money when we go because I know I'm gonna cash this rebate check, be able to pay for food, a lot of the souvenirs, and still have a good chunk of change to use as souvenir money once we're there. So it's, again, it's just a way to save money once you're there. So in summary, research your travel card or points card, maximize your points. The next thing is research your hotel on a travel, several travel websites, watch for those fees. Save up your Costco rebate and possibly your city Costco card rebates so that you can use those to purchase once you're there. Depends on your family size, but if you do get a place with a kitchen, again, you shop at Costco, you'll have a great trip. Hawaii is a great place to go to. You can look at our other videos to see the places we've gone to. I will leave a link down below of all the trips that we've done in the past. Bear in mind that I learned how to edit from the beginning and I've done better over time. So they It'll get be better fun. as you watch through them. Plus, um, we're keep an eye out because we are going to Hawaii. We're gonna do yep. a video on where we're going and what we're doing. So that's it, you guys. We don't have a ton of extra money to do this. No. In fact, I'll just be honest with this trip. It literally, in my mind, I had convinced him to go if because I told him it wasn't going to cost us anything outside of our, me and my kids saving money for the plane tickets. Our points were supposed to pay for the entire resort. cost of the resort or hotel, and that was the only way he had agreed to go. So when I found a hotel room that was over budget, I also found that there was a lower price guarantee that you could put in a claim for mm -hmm. that was going to bring the price back down to a very minimal cost, and we are still fighting that claim with Amex. I don't know if it's going to go through. So, it, it, so Dana's having to do some side hustle. I'm doing a lot of side hustle right now. And we're eating ramen. No, stop. We're still <laughs> eating fine. But I am having to babysit and do some extra things to cover that cost because it can't come from our regular income. So this is not unattainable. It is possible to do on a small budget. If you have a small income or a small budget, it is possible. You just sometimes have to think a year in advance or even two years in advance yeah. and think ahead. Someone mentioned the other day they were worried that our kids weren't excited about going because we go so often. When I talk to them about earning the money and saving it for themselves, they actually get excited about it. They're more dedicated to the trip than they have been in the past. They have been talking to me more about what they want in a resort what kind of pool they want, what kind of beach they want, what kind of island they want to go to. They've been more engaged in what kind of planning that we do in terms of our entire trip. And I like that because it's their money that we're going to go and spend. Like they're very invested in how we're going to put this trip together. And so no longer can I say, we're going to get in the car, we're going to go where I want to go once we get there. Now it becomes where they want to go because they paid for it. They're involved. They're yeah. very involved with it. And it helps us to keep everyone, you know, happy in terms of the effort that it takes to make sure we get to go. So, so keep an eye out for the coming videos. I hope, hopefully this helped you out. If there's any questions yeah. you have about how we do what we do. Please comment, leave a comment below. Comment I think below, we've, please. And, uh, I'm sure we've missed something and I'm sure that there's other questions that you guys might have. So please leave comments below. We'll give you tips and tricks going forward. We'll definitely talk about the resort that we're going to and you can check out other resorts that we've gone to. It is possible to go to a resort with Lagoon and Oceanfront on a budget. It, I, honestly, it is very possible. So thank you for watching, you guys. And if you're a resort out there that wants us to do a review <laughs> on your resort, We'd be happy to do that. <laughs> you can, yeah, you can sponsor us. Uh, what ones have we stayed at? No, I'm just kidding. All right, you guys, that's it. Take Thanks care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.